Hey Omis, I'm Steven Iwashki from Adventure Yoga. Thanks for joining me for this yoga pose breakdown of Parsvottanasana, also known as Pyramid Pose. It's what it's often called in English in classes, but sometimes called Intense Side Stretch, which is an accurate translation of the name of the pose, Parsvottanasana, even if mostly I feel a hamstring stretch and not a side stretch, but you no, know, whatever. You can read more about that and all sorts of things I have to say about this pose, like the benefits of the pose, the step-by-step -step guide to this breakdown video, um, the contraindications, a little bit of the history of the pose, things like that. You can check that out on the blog post that goes with this video. That's over on my website, adventureyogaonline.com. And there's a link to the blog post in the description for this video. Cool, but let's get on with this step-by-step -step breakdown of Parsvottanasana. I'm gonna unroll my mat, I'm gonna stand up on it, and I'll meet you there if you're doing this along with me. If you're not, just stay where you are, and I'll see you in a second. To practice Parsvottanasana, we start in Tanasana. So if you are practicing along with me, please stand in Tanasana. The next step is to take your right foot and step your right leg back about three to four feet. Step your right foot back, bring your right foot down to the ground, foot flat. Now about three to four feet isn't very specific, but that's because we're different heights. So how far apart you bring your feet varies depending on your height. If this helps as a reference point, you want your feet the same distance apart as you would have them for Warrior One, Virabhadrasana One. And just like Warrior One, line up your feet so that your left heel is directly in front of your right heel. So line up heel to heel. Have your right toes, right foot turning forward, roughly towards the front right corner of your mat. That might be a little far to turn for some of us. Have your left foot straight. Bring your hands onto your waist and turn to face forward. Reach your arms back behind you and bring your hands together back behind you. So it's like hands in prayer, but fingers pointing towards the ground. Then bring your thumbs to touch your back. Move the heels of your hands or your wrists away from your back and then flip your fingers around so your fingers touch your spine. This is probably quite intense in your forearms, maybe in your shoulders. That's okay, this is an intense pose that we're getting into. Move your shoulders back, and then see if you can flip your hands over so your fingers point straight up. With your fingers, your baby fingers, touching your spine. Squeeze your hands together in prayer position and slide your fingers up your back. This is reverse prayer that we're doing here with our hands behind our back. And this is very intense work in your hands and in your wrists and in your shoulders. So if this is beyond where you are today, don't worry about it. Krishnamacharya didn't do this version of the pose. He held his wrist. So you can do that too. Instead of reverse prayer, you can hold one wrist with the opposite hand or hold your elbows behind your back. Lift up through your chest. Pull your left hip back, draw your right hip forward, and twist your right leg in as you squeeze your legs towards each other. Lift up through your chest again, flex at your hip, and fold over your left leg. Lengthen through your spine as you fold over your leg. This is Parsvottanasana. Keep working to pull back through your left hip, pull your right hip forward and turn your right leg in as you squeeze your legs towards each other and lengthen through your spine. Work to keep your legs straight and strong and if you can keep them straight and strong while you come up, do. The other option is to bend your left knee a little as you rise up. Push down through your feet, lift your torso and stand up and step your right leg forward. Bring your hands into Anjali Mudra in front of your heart. That just makes a nice counter pose for your wrists. And bring your arms down to your sides. Tadasana. Now, this is a two-sided pose. So, second side, 
It's a lot like the first side. Step your left leg back, spin your heel down. Line up heel to heel, roughly three or four feet apart. Turn your left toes forward, have your right foot facing straight ahead. Place your hands on your waist and then turn your hips to face forward, turn your chest to face forward and straighten your legs. Reach back with your hands and with your fingers pointing towards the ground, bring your hands together behind you. And then touch your thumbs to your spine. Move your wrists away from your back and flip your hands around so your fingers touch your spine. And then move your shoulders back. Squeeze your hands together and flip your hands over so that they come into reverse prayer. And you can slide your fingers up between your shoulder blades. Pull your right hip back. Pull your left hip forward and twist your left leg in as you squeeze your legs towards each other. Lift your chest. Flex at your hip and fold over your right leg. Parasvottanasana. Pull up on your right knee to straighten your right leg, engage your quadriceps, stretch long through your spine. Push through your feet, make your legs strong, and come up. And step forward back to Tadasana. Hands back to Prayer, Anjali Mudra, so it's nice for your wrists, and then it's Tadasana. And that's our yoga pose breakdown for Parsvottanasana, or Pyramid Pose. I've actually filmed a whole class that works around this pose and helps us get closer to this pose, so if you want to check that out, there's that class for Parsvottanasana. Click on it, do it now, or add it to your watch later list. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, take a second, just click on my picture over there. Done. Thanks, Omis. See you soon.